Christine. Welcome. Good. Um, just a few things here. We have um, today. Uh, the first thing is we are really happy that we're able to start coming forward for communion again. However, if if that's your own comfort level or if you're it's difficult for you to walk down front, we do have some communion prepackaged still available right out in the narthex. So feel free to pick some of that up. Um, we the people handing out communion are gloved to to help keep everything clean. So we do welcome everyone to partake in communion today in whichever way is best for you. That being said, we need grape juice. So, because that's what we use in our low cups. So if you are so inclined to pick up a bottle of grape juice, please don't get cran juice, cran grape juice, because I hear about it, okay? So just straight grape juice, okay? And if you, if you, you can buy the generic or the Welch's or whatever, but... Um, if you can just drop that by the church this week sometime or when it or bring it next Sunday So we appreciate it. Thank you um, We have today worship and wonder is starting back That is for our children who are I think three to six or seven Kind of depending because a lot of our older ones have missed out on that the last couple of years. So um, We will be having that and with, uh, uh, no, not Calandra, with Marlisa and Karen will be leading that. And Calandra, did they go in after children's moment? Is that when they head? Thank you. After the children's moment, they will be heading in for that. So, um, Also, the youth work and fun trip is leaving today after second service. So we are excited about that. And we have seven of us going, and that should be great. Um, CCF, which is kindergarten through fifth graders, is on break for the next two weeks because of spring break. So we will return on Monday, April the 18th, right? Yeah. Had it wrong before. It's the 18th. Um, and we need our... Easter candy, if you would like to donate some for our children's Easter party. The Easter party is on the 16th, but we need the candy by next Sunday so that we can fill eggs for them to hunt. So we do not have handbell practice this week. We do have choir practice and Bible study and rock study boxing. Um, the office will, have, will be very limited this week if you need something please text me. Um, we'll be on that youth trip. Coverage will be spotty at times, so texting is probably the best way to get hold of me, and I can always find a good spot and call you if needed. So anything else? And, and I do want to say just a big thank you to all of you who have been volunteering and helping with some cleaning around the church. It's looking good, and we appreciate everyone who's been able to help with that, so thank you. At this time, let us listen to our prelude.
Good morning. Please stand if you're able for the call to worship. We are Disciples of Christ, a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. As part of the one body of Christ, we welcome all to the Lord's table as God has welcomed us. Let us join together now in our opening hymn, Rock of Ages, verses 1, 2, and 4. God, we give thanks that you have called us to be your people. In our times of gloom, you have sent your light. When, you, when we are tired, you lift us up. In our thirst for purpose in life, you bring us the living water of Jesus Christ. Set before us now the joy of discovery and a vision of the future, Unite us in friendship with one another, with Christ as our light and inspiration. Hear us now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. you to be seated as our children come forward for our children's message.
Well, good morning, my friends. Good morning, Vivian. You have any ideas what I might have in my bag this morning? You want to make a guess? What do you think might be in here? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Truth, okay. All right, so I'm going to take some things out this morning from my bag. I have an assortment of things here. All right. I've got a bunch of stuff here. got a bunch of stuff. All right, and one more. What are we going to do with them? We're going to sniff them, okay? Okay. We're going to sniff them. So I want, I want you to tell me what this smells like, okay? I'm going to start over here. What do you think? Like vanilla. Okay, what do you think? Vanilla. Vanilla? Vanilla, okay. I'll start with Vivian next for the next one. Okay, let's go over here. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, you can scoot over a little bit, sure. Have a sniff. Chocolate. You think chocolate? Coffee. How about, hmm, what about we go here? All right. Start with him. Thank you for being, being generous. Vanilla. You think vanilla? What do you think it smelled like? Lotion. <laughs> lotion. Just lotion. 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 All right. Okay. So I have a couple more things, but what I would like. Do, do, do the white one over here. Do the white one over here. Yeah. Which one? This one? This one. Okay. Sorry. It's a circly one. Pick you again. It's a cylinder, actually, if you want to use some math. Ice. It <laughs> smells like ice? Okay. Any ideas? No? Like bath, bath soap. Bath soap, okay. <laughs> it's got crystals like ice does, doesn't it? Uh, makeup. Smells like makeup? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Okay. So, you, you don't know. You, when they don't know, they're older than you. They should know, shouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's start here. You're older than Conrad, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, have a sniff. Uh, cream. Just smells like cream. Any certain kind of cream? Flowers, food? Flowers. You think it smells like flowers? Okay. Shaving. Shaving cream? Okay. So I gave you several different smells this morning, and I'd like for us to sort them. Okay? I want you to put them into good smells versus bad smells, okay? What do you think it smells chocolate like? Chips. Smells like chocolate chips. Okay, so if we were to make this over here the bad smell category, what would we put in the bad smells? Which of these would be the bad smells? That little bottle. This, this one? Okay, so put this one over here. Okay, so is this a good or a bad smell? Bad? It's medium. It's medium. Good or bad? Bad? Okay. Okay, what about this one? Good smell. It smells like the vanilla one. Good. Okay, sorry, Vivian, you're outvoted. That one will be good, okay? Okay, what about here? Bad smell. Bad. Bad, okay. All right. Uh, where am I at? Here we are. Good or bad? Good. Good. Medium. Good. <laughs> Medium. She says good, so I'm going with good. Okay, what about this one? This good. was the last one you good. had. Good. All right. And then this one. Yeah. Medium. Oh, bad. got two bads. Uh, three bads now. Okay. Okay. So we've sorted all of them. And this morning, we're going to be learning about good smells versus bad smells, okay? So there are some things that you like and some things that... What about food and water? 
cold and warm, those are opposites too, yeah. But this morning we're going to do good smell versus bad smell. Okay, so when we think about our own smell, we're not talking about just the, we're also talking about things that we do. Things that smell good to God and things that maybe aren't the best smell. So what about giving a gift? Whether you make a picture or a card for someone, is that a good smell or a bad smell? Good smell. Good, good smell? Okay. Okay, what about wanting to get even? Bad. It's relatable, right? <laughs> bad, okay. Okay. What about, actually, why don't I have you read it? Giving a hug to a friend. Okay. Good smell or bad smell, Vivian? It's a good smell. Good? Okay. All right. Paxton? Sharing what I have. Good. Good? Okay. Okay. I'm going to pick another one. You want to you pick the last I'm gonna one? I'm going to stand up. Okay, you stand up. Okay. Grabbing the last cookie. Grabbing the last cookie. Grabbing the last cookie when you've already had your share, is that good or bad? Well, I guess it depends on if everyone wants it. <laughs> Taking the last sleeve of Girl Scout cookies goes into a bad category for everyone else. Good for me, but... Yeah. So sometimes we have to decide whether what we're doing is gives off a good smell for us or a bad smell. And so the adults today are going to be hearing about that as well. Can you all think of anything else that might give off a good smell, something that you could do? Um, and basketball, share the basketball. And I'm going to tell you something. Okay, just a second. Your turn's coming. Something that, that would be good, Vivian? Uh, nice. Being nice? Okay. All right. Do you have anything? Being thankful. Being thankful, yes. Instead of always saying, give me, give me more. Give me, give me more. So this week, I want you all to think about what are some things being careful. Okay. We'll be careful, too. Let's think about some things this week we can do that represent God and give off a good smell. Can you join with me now? Let's gather around, and I'll clean up in just a minute. Okay. I can help you. Okay, thank you. That's a good smell, all right? Okay. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus. Dear God, we thank you for the children. We come to this part of the service where we talk about our giving. We've already heard some from our children about giving and thanksgiving. So thank you for that reminder of the importance of giving thanks. And when we share in our tithes and offerings, we are giving thanks. I talked earlier in our first service about with our people about the fact that we have a lot of ministries in this church, things people may not even realize that go on here. We have our, our Rock Steady Boxing. We, have, um, we host a, another church service here on Saturday nights. We have United for Recovery board meetings. We have a uh, PAL that meets here. We have a Boy Scout and Cub Scout troop. Now, we have rentals also, but the ones I just mentioned are ministries where we provide this facility and with our offerings and our tithes, we're helping support each of those ministries in what they are doing and being able to have a place to gather. So we are thankful that we can be a part of those ministries here, but also out in our community and also into the world. So we are thankful for that. And I do want to mention 
that our online giving link, it is on the website now. Is that correct, Steve? Yes. It is on our website now. So you can find that there if you're wanting to do it. And as long as we have your email address, a updated current email address, it will, we will get that and it will coordinate with our software at the church and we will have a record of your giving through that way. So it's very high tech, higher tech than I am. So, but we are thankful for that ministry as well and a new way to share with one another and with God. Let us pray. Oh God, we are thankful for so many different ways that we can give, that we support the ministry of this church in your name, O oh God, so that others may come to know you. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen. As we prepare for our time of prayer together, if you have a prayer concern, I would invite you to um, text that to um, the number on the screen if you have something you'd like to share and um, or if if you don't text you can raise your hand and I'll I'll get it from you also thank you All right, sorry about that. Just double checking my, my text here. And yes, sorry. As we come together for our time of prayer, want to give a celebratory up in our tech booth for Emmy who was elected as the district treasurer for the Key Club. So we're very proud of her. She hides up there a lot, but we are very appreciative. She hides up there with the other techie people. So she helps up, here. She helps up there. Sorry, she helps up there. We are very appreciative of her willingness. And anyone else who's interested in helping up there, just see any of them in the booth. So, um, Also, we have seven of us heading out on our work slash fun trip this week and praying for safe travels for all of us for that. And another praise is Isaiah's mom, who is Karen's daughter-in-law, was on our prayer list a couple of weeks ago for some heart issues, and she's doing much better, and so we're very glad of that. So that's good news. So. Um, we continue to hold in prayer um, Sherry, who is undergoing cancer treatment. 
We have several people who are having surgeries this week. I want to keep Meg W in our prayers. Sheila E is having surgery tomorrow. Um, also, Beth C, who is Barbara B's sister, is having an upcoming surgery. Um, Linda J, who is our former associate regional minister, had breast cancer 20 years ago. It has come back, and she will be having a mastectomy this week. So we're going to keep her in our prayers at this time. Um, also, Caden M., who is Amanda and Chris's youngest, has... Um, has ongoing severe asthma and had to have breathing treatments last night and will probably continue needing to have those. So we're going to keep him in our prayers. He's only, what, he, a year and a half, I guess, about. So um, also we've been asked to keep um, Shanita L., who is on the kidney transplant list, Letcher D., who is in the hospital, and Marvin B., who is having surgery this week as well. And um, we want to keep Ruth and all of her family in our prayer on prayers on the passing of her sister Faye last Sunday and just continue to hold her in prayer and all of her family for comfort and for reassurance of God's love and salvation. We also hold in prayer Richard H., and the families of Richard H. and Connie M., who are friends of Sherry F., and um, both of them passed this week, so we want to keep their families in our prayer as well. Let us turn to God in prayer. Oh God, we come here this day thankful to be able to worship together here in this place. We're thankful also, oh God, for the technology that allows others to join us in worship and praise of you. We pray this day, O oh God, for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine who continue to suffer from war, who suffer, O oh God, and yet they continue to praise you in subway stations, in other shelters. They continue in praise of you, O oh God. We pray this day, O oh God, that you would be with them we pray especially, O oh God, for those who have been able to leave, who are now refugees, who never dreamed two months ago their homes would be gone and they would be refugees. We pray for them. We pray especially for the children, O oh God, who have suffered greatly. Be with them. Be with the hands that are there to receive them, that are there to comfort them. May they feel your loving touch in them. We pray also, O oh God, for those in our military who have already deployed to the area in support. We lift up to you, O oh God, with thanks for so many who are willing to help people in need. We give thanks this day, O oh God, for Emmy and for her leadership in so many ways. We pray also, O oh God, for the seven who are heading out on the work trip, that you would be with them, grant them safe travel, grant them to know your presence among them, O oh God. We pray with thanks, O oh God, that Jennifer is doing better. We pray she will continue to know your healing and your strength in her life. We lift up to you, Sherry, as she undergoes her cancer treatments. We pray for those who are having surgeries this week. We lift up to you, Marvin. We pray for Linda, for Beth. We pray, O oh God, for Sheila, for Meg. And we lift each of them to you, O oh God, that they will know your healing through the hands of their doctors and nurses. We pray also, O oh God, for Caden, for his treatments. We pray for Shanita and for Letcher. We pray, O oh God, for those who have lost loved ones. Even though we are reassured, O oh God, with the promise of salvation through your Son, we still grieve. We pray 
for Faye's family, for Richard's family, and for Connie's family, O oh God. And we pray for other families who continue to grieve loss in their lives. May they know that you are with them. We pray for those here at home as well, O oh God. We pray for those recovering from tornadoes in Louisiana and other places. We pray for those who are suffering with COVID and other health issues, whether they be physical or mental. We pray for them, O oh God, that they will know your healing and strength. We pray for family caretakers and for health care workers. And we lift up to you, O oh God, those families who are wanting to expand with love in their hearts and are dealing with infertility and adoption issues. We pray for them, O oh God, that they too will know your presence. Help them to share the love that they so willingly offer. O oh God, we are just grateful to be here, to know that you are here with us. It's in the name of your Son we pray. Amen.
bells. Thank you all very much. It sounded really great today. A lot of hard work. Our scriptural lesson today is found in John, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 8. I'd like to follow along on the screen or in your Bibles this morning. Now, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, who he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, and he kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Here's a reading from God's holy word. They would start about 3 o'clock in the morning, and they would take these big, round, black cauldrons and start a fire underneath them. They had special paddles that they would use to stir. They would pour gallons of applesauce into those cauldrons. And then when it got hot enough, they would start dumping sugar in there and, and cinnamon red hots. And then finally, it would start to turn a lovely color of brown and just smell terrific. Now, can you look up there and tell what I'm talking about? What are they making? Apple. apple butter. That's right, apple butter. My home church makes apple butter and has sold it for their fall festival for years. And every time I think about my home church, and I'm up and over the place. There we go. Think about my home church, I think about apple butter. And that sweet smell of that apple butter that has been used for so many years. My mom always has a little inside track, and she gets me a couple jars for Christmas every year. That's my Christmas present. And I, you know, I, I don't share it with everybody, so if you come by the house and I share it with you, I, I probably think you're a special person or something like that because it's, you know, I'd only get, y'all can make it, they only make it once a year. But the sweet smell of apple butter always reminds me of my home church. Smells always bring me back to different things in time. Rice cooking on a stove always reminds me of my middle school cafeteria because those ladies can make the best rice pudding ever. And whenever I smell rice cooking, I think of those, those dear ladies. Of course, when I smell cookie, uh, turkey cooking, what's that remind you of? Thanksgiving, I always think the same thing. Even when you're in the deli in the middle of July, you smell that turkey, turkey being shaved off, you think of Thanksgiving. There's all kinds of, of smells that draws back. I, the smell of wet cotton in clothing brings me back to Army basic training days because uh, that's the kind of material that they used. You just, they were all in that big warehouse together and just smelled uh, the certain smell that they have. But there are certain smells that bring us to good things and certain smells that bring us to bad things in life. But the smell we have today in John, the 12th chapter, is a beautiful, wonderful smell. The smell of pure nard perfume, a full pound of perfume. This stuff is only made in India, and even today you can still buy some online. If you're interested in a pound of pure nard, you can get it for 645 bucks. It comes from India. I don't know why you'd want to buy a pound of nard, but if you do, you can buy it online. Uh, but back in Mary's time, it cost, as Judas said, 300 denarii, a year's wages for labor, which would be in today's U.S. dollars about 20 to $30,000 because it's only made in India and it's really expensive and to ship it back then was just, you know, it raised the cost through the roof. So she took everything that she had 
And you also have to remember, Jewish women at this time in history could not own land. They could not have a job. They were totally dependent upon the men in their lives. So this was really her life savings that she had to give to Jesus. I went online this week just, just for fun, just to see what perfume prices cost these days. And I found a very interesting perfume called... Uh, it's from uh, Coco Chanel, you know, Coco's Chanel's Mademoiselle. Doesn't that sound just sexy? Coco, yeah, it's a pretty cool perfume out there. And six ounces, which is about this big, six ounces cost $3,500. You're not getting it for an anniversary this year. It's not, not happening, Jackie. But, you know, but now it's probably good. I'd get in trouble if I bought it. But, you know, perfume's expensive. Imagine a whole pound of perfume being released in one place. No wonder Judas got on to Mary. Oh, she's just being wasteful. She's taking something that's very valuable and just throwing it all over Jesus' feet. Well, a couple of things on that. She is doing the job in the household that nobody wants to do. Because you have to remember back then, they didn't have Nike and nice clothes, shoes like we were today. What everybody walk around in? Sandals. That's right. Everybody walked around in sandals. I've been to the Middle East. It's hot. It's, it's kind of dusty. It's got that brown, like orange dust that gets all over everything. And it, your feet are going to smell. And nobody, but of course, you know, you walked into the house for dinner. You didn't want everybody smelling up the house, so you washed your feet. And it was the lowest slave's job in the house to wash feet. But Mary does that as an act of devotion. Mary also does a great lesson for us as well. She chooses people over money. Yeah, Judas was right. She could have taken that money, and that was her life savings. She could have given that money to the poor. She could have used that to better herself in life. She could have used that in lots of ways, but she chose devotion to God through Jesus Christ over money. Now, we all get on Judas because we know what he did. He betrayed Jesus, but we can't get on him too badly because we kind of act like Judas a lot of times. We want to put money over people. You know, I don't, I don't know if I want to give it because I want to hold it back. And how many times have we seen in our society children go hungry, is there a reason anybody should go hungry in America? No, we've got plenty to share around. We just don't share because we put money over people all the time. We, we see, you know, folks suffering. Sometimes of their own making, but a lot of times just because we don't share what we have. We put money over people. And I can go on all day about this, and you have your own examples as well. But think about what Mary does. She puts people over money. And says, yes, this is expensive. Yes, I worked hard for this. But yes, I'm going to give it to show my devotion to God through Jesus Christ. She puts people over money. And that sweet smell we're, we're told about just fills the house. And that's the sweet smell in this story. But remember where we are. We're at, in Bethany. We're at the house of Lazarus. Who knows why Lazarus is important in this story? Just shout it out if you know. What did Jesus do for Lazarus? Raised him from the dead. This was no accident here a couple weeks before Easter that he's in Lazarus' house, who he raised from the dead, because we're getting closer to Jerusalem. Jesus leaves there, and he goes out, and he goes in uh, to Jerusalem to Palm Sunday, which is next week, so I'm not going to talk about that. But we're getting ready here, so it's no accident. And the first smell we deal with in this story is in the next... The previous chapter, chapter 11, when Jesus says, open up the tomb. And, and you know what Martha says? <laughs> Lord, yeah, Lord, he's been in there four days. There's a stench. Don't open that up. In the King James Version, it says, but Lord, he stinketh. That's exactly what it says. But we move from the stench of death to the sweet smell of resurrection. Jesus is right. You know, leave Martha, leave, leave, Mary, leave Mary alone. She's done a great favor to me. 
She saved this to anoint my body, to prepare my body for burial, is what he says, which was the tradition back then. So what does devotion to God through Jesus Christ smell like to you? And think about that. I'm going to ask that question again. I think a lot of times, in my mind, devotion to God through Jesus Christ smells like sweat. Sweating it out. You know, building a ramp for somebody here in our community or in our, our county, which we've done several times. Sweating it out at Miss Dora's, doing uh, uh, sorting stuff, doing ha uh, house uh, rehabilitation for folks in that area. Going on mission trips and, and sweating like we did in Memphis, sweating like we're going to do this week at, at church camp. You know, sweating at church camp, our own beloved Camp Wakanda Hole, during the summertime, making sure the kids have a spiritual experience there. You know, sweating it out at the food pantry here in town. I mean, a lot of times devotion to God through Jesus Christ smells a lot like sweat. Sometimes I think it smells a lot like food. You know, we Christians always have to have this way. We show we love you because we feed you. And, and there's an old joke out there, you know, uh, children had to tell something in, in their school about their faith, life, and show and tell. And one little uh, boy gets up and says, you know, I'm Muslim, here's my prayer rug. Ooh, ah, that's great. You know, another person gets up and says, I'm, I'm, I'm Jewish, here's a copy of the, the Torah. Oh, ooh, ah, great. And the third little kid gets up and says, I'm disciples of Christ, here's my casserole dish. But a lot of times, we share the faith and love of God through Jesus Christ through food. Food given to a, at a bereavement meal for a family that's known loss. Food given to a family that's struggling, maybe with an illness, maybe with a problem, maybe with a disaster of one kind or another in the family. Helping out with that food smells a lot like devotion to God through Jesus Christ. Sometimes it smells like money given money to help the ministries of this church that not only uh, work here in Barstown, Nelson County, but all around the world. That's what devotion smells like to me. Anybody have a smell that reminds you of your devotion to God through Jesus Christ? A smell that reminds you of your faith? Now's the time if you have one. What? One more time. Laughter. Lavender. Oh, that's the embarrassment. I don't know what laughter smells like. I do know what lavender smells like. Yes, I do. Oh, that's great. Anybody else have a smell they want to share about their faith? Reminds you of your faith life? What? Incense. That's right. That's a good smell. I'm still going with coffee. Still going with coffee. Yeah. Well, yeah, that could. How many times do people here turn out cup of coffee in their hand talking about something? There you go. See, there you go. Coffee can be in the smell. Coffee. Coffee can definitely be a smell of faith, definitely. But money, I heard that one. Okay, yes. Easter lilies and poinsettias. There you go. Usually given in remembrance or in honor of somebody. Yeah, that's great. That's great. See, there are all kinds of smells associated with our faith life hitting there. Well, my smell that I always remember about my home church, my beginning of my faith life will always be apple butter. And that stuff, they've given, I don't know how much money it's raised for missions locally and, and foreign missions. I don't know how many people have been fed through apple butter. I don't know how many uh, people have been sent to church camp through apple butter. I mean, it, it has done a great miracle through apple butter. And every time I think about my beginning of my faith life in my home church, I'll always remember the smell of apple butter. Remember the smell of your faith. Your devotion to God through Jesus Christ. Maybe it smells like a pound of pure nard. Maybe it smells like lavender. Maybe it smells like a poinsettia or Easter lily. Maybe it smells like food or money or, or incense or coffee or whatever you might think it may be. Whatever that devotion to God through Jesus Christ reminds you in that smell, I hope you smell it a lot. And I hope you put it into action a lot. And I hope... It smells so sweet that it just, that love just permeates the whole area where you are. Remember the smell of your faith. 
Let us pray. Almighty and most wonderful God, we give you thanks and we pray this day for the sweet smell of devotion to you, that love that, that has so many different smells, that reminds us of so many different places and people and actions and our faith lives that we have lived out together in you. May we never waver in our devotion. May it always be a sweet smell, even if it smells like sweat, apple butter, money, whatever it may smell like, dear Lord. May it always be a smell that serves you and prepares us to show our love and devotion to you in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. The call of Christ is extended to each and every one of you. If you have not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, make it be today where you can smell that sweet love of Christ belonging in your life. If you want to make your presence with us official, please do so. Also, you're invited to join us at this table, the table brought to us by Christ's great sacrifice upon the cross, where all are welcome and where all are fed and cared for. We're asked for communion to please come down after the elder uh, blesses, uh, gives the words of institution and blesses uh, elements in prayer. Please stand if you're able for our hymn of discipleship and communion. Let us pray. In this silence of this moment, we feel the presence of your spirit with us, having heard about the actions and how they affect other people in positive or negative ways. We do pray as we surround this table and partake of the emblems of Jesus' sacrifice that we may show forth actions of good and positive nature that are sweet smell to those we serve each and every day. And may this be sufficient for them to turn to you and to ask for your forgiveness and to lead and guide them in doing positive and effective actions and deeds that will sm smell sweet to others. As we come around this table, we thank you <clears throat> that we are given chance after chance after chance to again Live up to your love and mercy and your grace. Guide us and direct us in all that we do as we partake and leave from this community of faith to the community at large. For these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, 
broken for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. May we now partake of our communion as we come to the Lord's table. I'd like to invite our acolytes to please come forward. As we're coming forward, I'd like to ask if you're able to uh, please stand for a benediction followed by our congregational response. Let us pray, please. 
Almighty and most wonderful God, we are thankful for the sweet smell of faith and devotion to you, no matter what the scent may be. May we always be extravagant in our faith. May we always share the best of what we have, no matter what it may cost, always putting people above money. May we always show our devotion to you in what we say, what we do, what we think, and every action. We ask Almighty God that as we leave this place, you will be before us and behind us, to our right hand, to our left, above us and below us, until such a time as we may come together again on this side of the river or the next. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Thank you.